This video will demonstrate a design review process. Just one possible use of visual decision making within Agile A9. In this scenario, there are two participants. Pat, a product manager responsible for a line of industrial robots manufactured by Acme. And Dan, an engineer spearheading the development of Acme's industrial robots. Pat has received feedback from field services that it takes too much time to maintain the robot's small finger due to issues with accessing its screws. He decides to investigate. Pat logs into Agile and uses the search tool to find the information about the robot he wants. He selects the robot hand assembly to access its details and associated CAD model. Since the assembly and all related parts have been checked into Agile through CAD integrations, Pat can browse through the CAD structure and has access to any part details. In this case, he is interested in viewing the model. To open it, he simply clicks on the assembly file name. Once the CAD file is loaded, Pat can interactively manipulate the model. It can be rotated, recentered, and even specific parts can be selected for further analysis. In this case, to get a clearer view of the problem, Pat uses the transparency tool to see the screw's placement behind the wrist. He can see the screws are hidden behind the wrist cover, so he decides to create an engineering change request, or ECR. He does this directly from the viewing context. He uses the Create ECR option from the right mouse button menu. This creates an ECR entity in Agile PLM. The ability to create ECRs is an out-of-the-box feature and is based on AutoView's Augmented Business Visualization Framework, which can be extended to trigger any type of action. The newly created ECR is displayed in Agile and can be edited. Here, Pat is adding additional information in order to better describe the request. He adds a description, the reason for change, reason code, and workflow to use. Pat also needs to make sure that the assembly CAD files will be attached to the ECR. He selects the Attachment tab and uses the Add from Affected Items button to associate the assembly CAD files to this ECR. The system displays a dialog with the affected items, the assembly, and the wrist cover. By simply double-clicking on the assembly, it will be automatically associated as an attachment to this ECR. Pat can then start the workflow using the Next Status button. From here, Pat assigns the next step to Dan from the Engineering Department. Dan will need to do a review, add comments, and validate the issue. Once Pat is finished inputting the information, the ECR is submitted and Pat logs out of the system. Dan logs into the system and as a routine activity checks his workflow routing list to access his assignments. Dan reviews the ECR, checks the affected items, and goes to the attachment in order to access the CAD file. He selects the CAD assembly file and uses the red line button to be able to use AutoView's markups to add comments of the needed modifications in the context of the model itself. Dan uses the Entity Search tool to properly identify the risk cover affected part. It gets highlighted on the model within a red bounding box. To better understand the problem, Dan would like to move the wrist cover out of the way. 
To do so, he is using the manipulator tool and moves the part. He then zooms in and uses the manipulator on the screw holding the small finger so he can validate the trajectory of the screw and possible interaction with the wrist cover. Dan believes that drilling a hole in the wrist cover might be the solution. So he needs to take some measurements to define the hole characteristics. To do so, he is using AutoView's measurement tool. He measures the screw head and gets a radius of 2.5 millimeters, which means the diameter is 5 millimeters. Measurements are also available as markup entities. Dan activates the markup mode in order to put the measurements directly on the model. Dan uses this to measure and annotate the screw head and the width of the wrist cover. Dan finds that the width of the wrist cover is 34 millimeters. A hole of 10 millimeters will provide a good access to the screws without tampering with its solidity. Once Dan is finished taking measurements, he will add a text markup to explain what he would like to implement. He is associating it to the face of the wrist cover to make sure the annotation will remain associated to the part even when rotating or manipulating the model. AutoView's color tool allows a user to change any part or group of parts color. This could be useful in a number of workflows including as it is being used in this case just to indicate a color change in the part. When finished, Dan saves the markup which is stored in Agile's file vault. Dan activates the markup panel to review the annotations that he has created. All markup entities created are shown here in this panel, including type, author, and date of last modification. Satisfied with his work, Dan now triggers the next step in the workflow. He assigns it to Pat so Pat can review his suggested modifications. Pat logs back into the system to review Dan's work. The ECR workflow has moved to the approval stage and Pat now begins his review. The attachment tab is showing a new red line icon in front of the assembly file. This icon indicates that there are now markups associated with this file. By clicking on the red line icon both the assembly and associated markups are opened in AutoView. Pat can now review the solution suggested by Dan to see if he should approve it. Pat approves the change request by confirming the sign off and adding a comment to document his decision. Sometime later, Pat is notified that the CAD model has been updated and a new version has been checked into the system. Pat will use AutoView's Compare tool to identify the modifications being implemented and that they are matching his request. It is important that everything he approved is implemented and that no unapproved changes were added. He first does a visual inspection on the wrist cover and can see that the color has been changed to purple and the screw access holes are there. He now goes into compare mode where he can see the two versions side by side with a third window at the bottom that will show what has been added, deleted or remains the same between the two models all color coded.
being able to create ECRs or ECOs directly from the CAD model is just one possible use case for AutoView for Agile. To learn more, please contact an Oracle representative.